Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden with the Geek Group. Today I wanted to take a minute and show you guys the old school method of threading. And I figured this would be a good time to make the video because we're installing the compressed air system at the machine shop as part of the new equipment upgrades. And I'm going to do a follow-up video on this of how we're going to do threading in the future and you'll understand why I wanted to do one with an old school. So we've got our super high-tech World War II vintage East German war surplus lathe of science and a piece of pipe that has been freshly cut and needs threads on it. So I'm going to show you guys how this is done. Now, real plumbers have a proper holder spinny thing for doing this. We don't. We have a lathe. This is the best I can do. So this is how we hold the pipe. Now, on the lathe, you can stick, you, you put things in here in the chuck. This is a three-jaw self-centering chuck. This part is referred to as the headstock. And there's a tube that goes all the way through so that when you want to put something really long in it, you can just that it comes right out the end. So that's kind of handy. And I'm going to take the tape off because we don't need that at this stage. This is our T-bar with our RBF tag on it. One of the most common and incredibly dangerous things to do in a machine shop is to leave the T-bar in the headstock. This is a wrench used. It's like a chuck key, basically. And you use this to tighten it. And one of the most common ways to screw up a lathe and to really hurt yourself in a machine shop is to leave this in the lathe. It happens all the time, and when you turn a lathe on, this will slam down into the, the rail and mess it up really good. So I put an RBF tag on here to remind people in a nice, big, obnoxious red way to take the key out of the lathe. But you put that in there, you tighten it with everything you got, and I'm a little guy, so what I got ain't all that much. So. I have a cheater bar. I don't recommend you do this, but it's here this, so I gotta start working out a lot more. So I like a little bit of Newtonian physics in my mind. Here. Now to actually cut the threads on there, we have to use two things. We have to use a device called a die and lube. Now the lube we're using is Tap Magic, which is great. They're not a sponsor, but they should be. And Tap Magic comes in two flavors. There's the regular Tap Magic, which is just a cutting lubricant. And then there's the aluminum version, which is much better because it smells like cinnamon. Because if you'll notice, some genius over at Tap Magic made the, the jars look pretty much exactly the same. And if you're working with it, you can't really tell the difference except when you're using the aluminum because it smells like cinnamon. Why they chose cinnamon, I have no idea, but it's, it's very nice. Now, this is cool. This is one of my favorite tools. This is one of those tools that if you pick this up, you're going to work. It's, it's just a damn manly tool. And it's for threading pipe. This is a die. If you're going to cut threads on the outside of something, male threads, you use a die. If you're going to cut threads on the inside of something, you use a tap. And we'll do a whole series of videos on taps and dies and how they work on that. But this is just a quick thing to compare the two different methods of threading. This method, we're using taps and dies. Um, this is the die in here. You can see the the four jaws, and there's teeth inside, four sets of teeth, and the teeth are progressive, which means they start out at the outside diameter of the pipe, and they get a little deeper and a little deeper and a little deeper as you go. And they keep doing that on this because these are pipe threads, and pipe threads are actually not straight, they're a wedge. The end of a threaded pipe is a cone, and it's a, a, it helps in sealing things. The other side is just a tube of the right diameter to guide the pipe in because when you're cutting threads you want to make sure everything's very straight. So this just slips just barely over the pipe and it holds everything straight. The rest is just a big lever and there's this thing which is the direction. This works like a ratchet wrench and if you look at this one side has a little point and the other side is flat. So when you want to go this way you point it that way and when you want to turn around the point is the direction that you want to travel and that's, that's how it's set up. So that's the basics of the tap and die system here. And we want to make sure the lathe is locked in such a way where, see right there you can see I can turn the headstock very easily because that's how the lathe is normally set up. And this is like if you wanted to, to regularly turn stuff as it would normally operate. Now the lathe is driven by a belt that turns the main headstock, but this lathe can also do threading where you use the lead screw and all that. We're not going to do that today. And to set it up for that, you want to turn very slowly. So we're going to disengage the thing in there. And now it's separated from the belts. And you can, you can turn the belts in a different direction. And then we go and grab that. 
And now this is driving the gears on the end and there's a lot more resistance. And I can take that, if this isn't enough oomph, in fact, I'll probably just do it that way. You can set it to go through both. You lift that up and turn that around to find there's, okay, now we're engaged here for the belt drive. And I turn this gently and engage the gear drive as well. And now this drive system will bind against this drive system and you can't turn that. It would be really bad to turn the lathe on at this point, so I'm just going to hit the emergency stop and lock it right out. Now we add a little lube. You can't really have too much lube, as is in the case in most things in life, just lots of lube. Lube is good. We're pointed the right way, and now I want to pull into the pipe with this hand and get that started on there. And it starts really easy. Anybody can do it, but it gets hard in a hurry. That's why they put a big lever on there. And you can see stuff falling out. These are the shavings. You can already see it started to cut threads right in there. And the die is just a very, very hard, brittle metal that is actually carving the threads right in the end of the pipe. And every time I go around, I cut one more thread. Ah. Now, at this point, you don't want to do this all at once especially when going by hand. I'm going to go backwards, and if you listen, you'll hear the chip break. Right there. Because you want to clean the chips out. And we'll back this all the way off. And just shake all the chips out. And if I had compressed air, I'd blow them out, but compressed air system doesn't work yet. So we're going to add a little bit more lube. I'm going to change our direction back to the way we want to go. Gently put this on the pipe. And now with almost no force, just fingertip pressure, I'm going to start those back out and they'll find the groove. And now we're back where we were. See, it's really easy to go on now. And when you hit the spot where you're starting cutting again, you'll know, right there. So you're nice and hard all of a sudden. And you go until the pipe just starts to peek out the end. We can see that there. We're, we're just coming out the end. And then I'm going to reverse it and take it out. Okay, now we shake that out. Now I'm going to undo the lock back here and turn the emergency stop off. I'm going to put the cap on my tap magic, set that aside. And I'm going to bring this up, get that out of the way. And we're actually going to use the lathe the way it's intended because these need a little cleaning up on the end. I've got half of an extra thread because the pipe wasn't cut very straight. Clean that up. And I'm just going to clean this up just a little bit on the lathe. Just the very tip, nice light facing cut. Half a thread width. There we go. And you hear how it's a nice steady sound now instead of the bop 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 bop. 
tell it means it's flat. Turn that off. And we're good. We've got a beautiful pipe with nice threads on the end, and it's all ready to go. Now that is the process that you go through to cut threads the old-fashioned way. They've been doing it this way for roughly 253,000 years now. Threads have been cut in the same system. So now you know, and in a week or so, we'll make another video when our new piece of equipment gets here. And I'll show you how to cut threads the new way. And you'll understand why I like this so much. So you guys have fun. That's today's adventure. And uh, now I'm going to go install this pipe in the sand.